right, unrest in Syria. It's a harsh reality for the thousands who have left the country in search of a better life. And this morning, we're talking with Luke Vargas, who just got back from the Middle East. He's the United Nations correspondent for Talk Radio News Service. Um, Luke, you, you just returned from the Syrian-Jordanian border. 600,000 Syrian refugees now li live in Jordan. What's it like there? What don't we see on TV? Well, what you see on TV most are the refugee camps. And something I didn't even realize before I went there is that only 20% of that 600,000 uh, displaced Syrians living in Jordan are in the camps. They're the easiest place to go. Mm -hmm. uh, it's quite easy for a member of the media to go there and see the refugees there, but 80% are in the cities. And those are the people that are much harder to see, not only because uh, they're mixed in with the, the regular Jordanian population, but the UN specifically tells its aid workers not to wear identifying clothing as they move through the cities. So it's a, it's a struggle to go and see those people a little bit further off the beaten path. Wow. So, Luke, why did you go there, and, and, and what did you learn that you didn't think you would learn? And, and, and uh, I went for two reasons. The first is because I spend most of my days uh, at the United Nations, just a few blocks away from me in New York here, and I hear about Syria all the time from a political angle, to the extent that I feel like it must have been distracting me from the real humanitarian cost of the crisis. And also because uh, my colleague Zach traveled to Turkey last month to see the other side of, of the crisis, and I arranged his trip for him and uh, was very jealous of the experience he had and what he was able to see, and I put together a travel proposal and uh, was very happy that uh, I, was, I was able to go. Okay. There are more than 2.2 million Syrians who have uh, fled their homeland and they're now residing in neighboring countries, Jordan, Turkey, Lebanon, and Iraq. Now, I don't mean to sound crude, but I mean, it must be really bad if you leave there for Iraq. Uh, for any of these countries, uh, Iraq is feeling the weight of, of all these refugees. In a country like Lebanon, it's 25% of the Lebanese population is now Syrian uh, refugees. In Jordan, it's 10%. And in all these countries, uh, the, the, the assumption that you work with is that the host country that the refugees travel to is necessarily going to be better. But at least in the case of Jordan, they already have problems with water scarcity. Uh, there's a, l a real limit on affordable housing. Access to health care is expensive. So in all these countries, they're very taxed, and, and the imposition of uh, of, of hundreds of thousands more people are really straining the economies, uh, and at least in Jordan, leading to tensions between the local population and uh, also the very needy refugees who have just arrived. What, what are you hearing from these refugees, Luke? What are the stories they're sharing with you? Uh, luckily, they are not just trying to survive. The UN and other programs are doing a great job giving them food, giving them access to health care and education in some instances. But there is a, a profound uh, disillusionment and something I can relate to as someone who's just graduated college uh, from young people whose uh, whole educational careers have been thrown off track. They don't, uh, they're kind of complaining about things that we may not think are that consequential, mm -hmm. but I can really understand. They say, how are my credits that I'm, I'm getting in these schools in Jordan ever going to transfer back? Right. What is my future like if, if and when I can return to Syria. Uh, so not only the pressing problems of getting jobs, supporting families, paying for housing, but uh, I, I was struck particularly uh, by the stories of young people, of adolescents who, who just don't know what they're going to be returning to and think that they're simply wasting their time going to schools without much of a focus uh, in their new country. Wow. Thanks for that perspective. Luke Vargas with us this morning. Thank you so much, Luke. Sure. It's great to speak to you. All right. We're going to head over to Joey now. Hey, Joey.